Greetings, greetings, family. We are live for another Wednesday on the Sister Shanice Show. Absolutely delighted, as always, uh, to be in your company and to have you join us on this platform. As you can see, we have our special guest in the house, uh, Brother Paul Labina. How are you doing? Oh, I'm very well, thank you. Oh, well. fantastic. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. And uh, to everyone in the audience, how are you? How are you doing? So uh, we know that the link has only just gone out there. It's going to take a moment or two for you to join us. Uh, so I just want to welcome you as you come through the door. And I'll use uh, actually these opening moments just to um, remind you of uh, some events that we've got coming up and also uh, the future guests that we've got coming up as well. Yeah, let me let me just share screen and uh, do that uh, with you right now. So as you know, uh, I'm here almost every, every Wednesday, but please know that I will not be here next Wednesday. I won't be here next Wednesday, no live next Wednesday, but uh, as you can see, I will be uh, doing the Wednesday morning show on the Big G Galaxy Afiri, the only de-brainwashing station. So uh, every Wednesday morning from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. GMT time, not GMT, BST time, British summer time, uh, I do a radio show on Galaxy Afiri, the only de-brainwashing station. And so, um, Please do join me, do please do join me. My special guest that I had today was Brother Marmo from the Marmo University. And uh, since January, we have been doing an African history series and I've been having special guests. Brother Marmo has been a guest on a number of the show and he has been absolutely phenomenal. So make a note of the Xeno link that you need in order to join us on that show. And the good news is, it's a call in as well. So you can give us a call on the show and we can have conversations and discussions about the uh, matters that we have discussed on the show. And just to let you know who we got coming up as well um, and who we have recently had actually. So um, as you know, those of you who watch Last Strong will know that we had our brother, Dr. Kafusa in the house. Oh my days, he was absolutely phenomenal. And uh, just to remind you that his video is there for you to look back on, uh, get your notebook and everything handy, and uh, you can see the works there. Let me just click off of this uh, X here. Uh, and yeah, and you'll be able to watch his video back. And then another date for your diary is Wednesday, the 21st of September. So I'm not here next strong, but the following strong, we have the return of our brother, Leo Mohammed. Oh my gosh, he's gonna be coming with another phenomenal, phenomenal presentation and message for the African man, part two. So make sure you don't miss that one, okay, family? And then following uh, in the couple of strongs following our brother Leo Mohammed, we have the return of Dr. Clyde Winters, absolutely phenomenal historian, anthropologist, linguistics, author of numerous books. Uh, I'm actually doing his course at the moment, his research course, and uh, Wednesday's session was on statistics. Oh my day, statistics don't get any easier. <laughs> uh, but he's a phenomenal, phenomenal teacher, absolutely enjoying uh, his course. And uh, we've all got to do a research study. And my research study is going to be looking at the history of um, the original Africans of Ireland. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, original Africans of Ireland? Yes, uh, Africans were the original people to populate the region of islands, and I'm doing that research, and it's really, really interesting. And also coming up uh, then on Wednesday, the 12th of October, is our brother Nubian Jack. Yeah, uh, he has been doing some phenomenal works in the community. Wow, wow, wow an award-winning inventor. And uh, we've got the pleasure of having him on our show uh, on the 12th of October. And today, 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 family, as you know, we have our brother, Paul Obina in the house. Uh, he's the man behind the scroll with over 8,000 years 
of our history and that scroll is being updated as we speak and it looks even more colorful with even more information wow 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 i don't know how he does it but you know uh, i can only imagine the amount of research that goes into their works uh, I've got the uh, original scroll, the original version, and I still often make references to it today. My brother Paul, uh, you know, give us a bit of information about the background to that scroll. What was it that made you decide that, you know, I want to do this? And then just tell us a little bit about how you've actually gone about doing the works, please. Well, I, I found um, what, one of them was being mixed race. Because uh, what I was finding was that any time I wanted to find any information about my father's people, it, I had to dig it out or whatever. And then I just the deluge of Tarzan movies and like he, he, even in even in Africa, there was an illiterate white guy in his underwear was running things there, <laughs> and, I and I couldn't um, I couldn't get my head around that ever from being very very young. And so I started doing comparisons. When I, when I started looking into history, I just looked at the dates. That is a simple thing. And, and the, oldest, the oldest European civilization I could find was, um, was of course, Greece. Mm -hmm. And then, then I looked at the dates of Egypt. And that's just on the short chronology. And it was like 2,000 years of history before the even the dark ages of the Greeks. So it, it was wow. a really simple thing. And, and then I, I found, I, I actually in the presentation, I've got the, um, the, the information part. So there's just a part of me trying to balance information out. And then, uh, then, then I hit the work of uh, Dr. Hilliard. So that, that's, um, that's basically how I came about that. And he laid out, some very simple, simple facts. And so that's how I ended up uh, doing the, the timeline. Possibly in 90, I think the first one I did was 1991. Right. And then um, it's only when I got computer literate that I could put it in the uh, order. And then now I, now I um, as like I said, I was going to modify the timeline. I thought it was going to be four to five days, four or five days to get it done. Yeah, I'll get it done. So four weeks later, working all different hours of the day and night, I've, mm -hmm. um, I've seen the light at the end of the tunnel now. So, oh, absolutely fantastic. I know the works, yeah. you know, it's definitely going to be worthwhile. And you make it sound so simple. Tell us, um, you know, the works that you were doing. Is this uh, on the 8,000 years, the research, you know, the graphics, putting it together, getting it published? Is this something that you had training to do that you went to college to learn? Or, you know, did it really just come that simply to you? So this is something that maybe, you know, you were destined to do. And so it's just all fallen in place. Uh, you know, inspire some of the uh, listeners out there. Well, I'm a graphic artist. I, I, I trained yeah. as an artist at college uh -huh. to teach art, even though I've never taught art, really, uh -huh. uh, since uh -huh. I qualified. But um, I, I always had the graphics. I've got a visually retentive memory. I think what it was, my mom used to take us on trips when I was young. So I was born in 1959. So the most up-to-date thing then was taking slides. Uh -huh. So because I was in, a, you know, we, we go on these family trips out because there's like 10 of us. It, there's my, what turned out to be my half brothers and sisters and foster brothers and sisters. So we go on these days out. My mum would take slide photographs, yeah. then do carousels with, um, well, it was just only slides at first. Then the, the big technology was these carousels came. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of the young short. ones won't know what you're talking about there <laughs> that's their fault that's their fault you know, they, they, goes too quickly yeah they, they, they don't they don't remember the 45 <laughs> rpm I, I remember the the 78 rpms actually as well when i when i was young yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like gramophones they call them yeah. so so um it's, it's one of the blessings of being this old now i remember all of this stuff but um but yeah, what happened was my mum would show us the the trip, these slides, 
and so we'd be re, I'd be recalling the trip out, and I think in the in the midst of that because I was only I was only that young when we started. I was about maybe two or three, mm-hmm. so the visual retention was actually placed in. Oh yeah. So I'm not good with names. Um, I'm not a big I'm not a big reader as such. I I go in and glean information and, and what, that I need, but um. I just have this visual retentive memory. So that's that's how I did. There's a guy called Ibrahim, Brian Thompson, a guy in Liverpool, put uh, a, there's a document I did on the history of race and racism. It was a lineage of race theorists who formed the British education system and the assessment procedures. Mm-hmm. So I had a lineage of them and mm-hmm. uh, I did this booklet that started with 12 pages because I was challenged by a, a, a lady in a school in Congleton in Cheshire to um, to talk about race and racism. I had all this stuff, I wouldn't talk about it. Mm. And, uh, you know, she cussed me out. She actually said, you know, don't be coming to a library, a library room in a school with two middle-aged, middle-class white women and tell mm-hmm. us this and then won't teach the children. Mm-hmm. So she did the challenge. So I did my first book, 12 pages. Next one was 72 pages. Wow. It's about 98. He is 85, 84, 85. Mm-hmm. And then in 1986, I was in Liverpool. And uh, this guy, Brian Thompson, who was an art teacher as well, he went off and took slides of all the pages, the cat of the images in it, came in apologetically saying, I hope you don't mind, I've done this. And I was like, no. And when I put it on, it's like being back in the family home again and whacking the images. And I could recall all the information to do with the images right right so it's a, it is a it is a it is a learning style they always say you, you never forget a face mm-hmm. especially if they owe your money <laughs> the, done the, the power of images <laughs> yeah, so, so it's how it's how it's how what your learning style is very yeah. very much what they do in schools is in general we start off with this visual thing you know it's very physical whatever whatever but they take us over into the left brain and then contained by subjects when by the time we go to secondary school you hit kind of 10 to 12 subjects and then really information doesn't really gel together again that's in general mm-hmm. so uh, so yeah it's is it but I, i've got some things in the presentation that will explain why the t- the timelines and the format it's in uh, I really want to drive that home with people see, so they see what they're looking they know what they're looking at all right well certainly looking forward to that I just want to welcome the family into the house greetings greetings everybody in the audience as you can hear we have uh, you're hearing already from our brother Paul Avina delighted to have him back again uh, many of you were requesting that he returns. Uh, you were enjoying the presentation that he delivered to us last time round. So uh, he has kindly agreed to come back. Looking forward uh, to today's presentation again. So Black Beauty in the house, we welcome you. Ah, oh, Stress Frog. Really, I haven't seen you in the house for a little while. How's your channel coming along? Uh, check out uh, Set Stroke uh, Vlogs channel they do some great work so there Tuka Pomoja great to have you in the house yes and uh, we've got uh, Epacho good to have you in the house as well Bobby welcome welcome ah welcome Bobby is uh, saying that deeper we dig the blacker it gets yes isn't that the case and uh, you know I was just having a conversation with our brother Paul Abina uh, backstage because um, you know we're working on getting a special guest in the house who uh, uh, is uh, very interested in the field of archaeology but I won't say who that is as yet because haven't secured it but definitely working on getting a, a great a great historian in the house uh, so uh, hey we got brother Icon Bay in the house rise up rise up sister Afro Jamo rise up yourself good to have you in the house brother Brian uh, Ross connecting uh, Mr. IC3 haven't seen you for a couple of strong good to have you in the house 
And uh, yeah, we welcome each and every one of you as you come and let us know where in the world you're viewing us from because, you know, it's always good to uh, get an idea of what our global reach is. We know we've got family from all around the world. Uh, when I look at uh, <clears throat> my, the geography of where uh, my viewers are uh, watching me from, it's all over the world. Uh, majority are in the UK, almost equally as many in the USA. And then, you know, from places like even the Philippines and of course, Jamaica and Canada and Oh, we've got listeners all around the world, uh, Barbados, Bermuda, it's beautiful. We have got a beautiful global family. Rise up, rise up, positive gloves. Uh, good to have you in the house. Bobby's watching us from Newark in the USA. Awesome. Welcome, welcome. So um, without further ado, I am going to hand the platform over to our special guest today, Brother Paul Abina. And what he has said, family, is that if you've got questions, uh, comments, you know, um, he will take them as he goes uh, through his presentation because, you know, we're going deep today. He's laying the foundation today, family. And, uh, you know, as he goes deep, he doesn't want to lose anybody. So if you've got any questions, drop your questions in the chat and I've got permission to ask him questions along the way. OK, so my brother, Paul Abina. Without further ado, let me hand over the platforms to you as you prepare to share your screen with the family and uh, take it away. It's gonna be a great one, family, uh, as always. Over to you, Brother Paul. Okay, thank you very much. First of all, I, I'd like to um, apologize for last time because I, I think, as I remember, the, it started going dark. I couldn't see the clock. That's uh, up above here, the one I use for timing. So uh, I went long, so please keep me to time. So apologies oh, yeah. for that. Um, thank you very much for the invitation as well. Um, I, I hope I can uh, do justice to the, the brilliance of um, and humanity of African people. And uh, that the, the main, the main uh, aim is to get us out of the, the restrictions and build co cultural capital is a very important thing. Um, I was actually down in Manchester last night with uh, some of the reform mandem. Do you, do you have that? Do you use that term down in London? Mandem. Oh, the mandem, yeah. Uh, a little dated now, but yeah, the young oh, ones, the, they used to use that enough, enough. <laughs> well, the, the, the mandem who were... They, they were very much involved in pharmaceutical, the distribution of pharmaceutical goods. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, but mainly illegal ones. Uh -huh. So they um, said, and call it illegal, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Ah, well, so, so what happened is that I was meeting with some of them last night and we were talking about the relative weakness of uh, primarily Caribbean, the Caribbean community, and how all over the country in the UK, uh, the community is under attack with, with uh, centers being closed and repossessed mm -hmm. and funding being withdrawn. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm in mind of a, a book called uh, Stay in Power, written by Peter Fryer. Peter mm -hmm. Fryer is a, was a, God rest his soul, was a, a, a white, white writer, uh, mm -hmm. communist, fascinated by the arrival of the SS Empire Windrush in Tilbury, 48. Mm -hmm. And he started this uh, lifelong passion, um, fascination of, uh, of black people in Britain. So he did the book Stay in Power. I know, I, know, uh, I remember people were angry because it's like the white, well, white, white man's written that. So uh, Florence Shylon did a book called Blacks in Britain. Brilliant book as well. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't as comprehensive. Uh, I understand Friar employed researchers as well to get into this thing. But one thing he did highlight was... Um, Operation Star in London in 1980, London wide was Operation Star called Swamp 81 in Brixton. Mm -hmm. the, he, he alleges there that it was in actual fact a retaliation by the authorities for the uh, New Cross Fire demonstration and march from Deptford that went mm -hmm. from Deptford down into down to Parliament Square. 
Hmm. And so is after that, there was a kickback by the police. So it, it's very interesting that since mm -hmm. Black Lives Matters, there's been a really concerted effort to um, exploit the relative weakness of ownership of properties. So mm -hmm. where, where, you know, we didn't, we, we didn't purchase, we didn't buy. And so of course, the Windrush uh, scandal, whatever you're going to call it, is, um, is one such thing. But we should understand that when we were transported in German ship, in a German ship, it wasn't the first frigging time, because the first one was the Jesus of Lubeck, owned by John Hawkins, the first uh, English slaver. So, you know, we, it's a, I always call it the tale of two ships. We have the Jesus of Lubeck in the 1500s, and then we go through to the 1940s, and we have the SS Empire Windrush, mm -hmm. both of which are German ships, and still enslavement, in, in, other, in other words, transporting labor from one place to another. So we shouldn't be surprised. But th there's, a, there's an old adage from the boxing world. I, I used to be a boxer, um, still love the sport and um, coach sometimes. But they say, it says in there, defend yourself at all times. Mm -hmm. And part of that, of course, it's always about the mind. It's not about the... It's not about just the physical, it's about the mental and also about the psycho spiritual and how we how we prepare ourselves. So without further ado, I, I, if there was an elder here, ah, when I start talking with this, uh, the, yeah, it was not what there's a he knows who he is. There's an elder. I, I should be asking permission for him to speak if I go into the proper tradition. But um, I'm hoping it's okay and I'll continue now. Uh, I like to say this calm, connected consciousness. I can fire. I'm Aries. I'm a child of Ogun. I'm also balanced with my Eshu uh, Elegba. My, my, uh, my, my, my attitude can be fiery, but what I try to do is go calm, connected, and be fully conscious of what I'm dealing with. Um, as now at 63 years of, old, uh, of age, um, I, I try my best to... Um, give an example to the younger set. So just this morning, I was in Garth prison with, um, with, with guys who were down, who were lifed off for murder. They're down on murder or attempted murder or whatever. Wow. And I'm working with those brothers in there. And um, yeah, it, it's, uh, I, as always, when I started in Garth prison 33 years ago, it's one of the key places I learned. I learned about what happens when things go wrong. And uh, all the, that, what, I, what myself and a brother called Ta Twilight Bay, we always call it the setup. We say, don't get upset, get the setup. The set and set being the, the nature of God from Kemet that divided the body of a set. That's why you've got a set of, uh, a set of cutlery or a set of playing cards or a set. They still use the term today. It's about division. Set is not the devil, set is a function. But set, later was actually expressed by Niccolo Machiavelli. You must understand Niccolo Machiavelli. As Tupac Shakur recorded under the name Machiavelli, he was advertising the fact that the idea of divide and rule and divide and conquer is a very, very powerful thing. Even if you're fighting and boxing, you go broker manner, you separate, you separate the person from their faculties. And that indeed is what's happened on a big level. And today we're trying to connect back to those methods we're trying to connect back to those cultural ways, these cultural metaphors, the symbols, the things that inspire us to, uh, uh, to, to perform well, to act well, to do the best we can be. One of the biggest problems, though, is that when we look on other people's cultures, they're, they're not walking around with history books telling them who and what they are. They, a lot of the times, these other cultures have remained intact and they have this connected mm. lineage going on. So one of the things that I, I know uh, Anthony Browder, Asa Hilliard, I'll be referencing, they, they, they both talk about historical discontinuity. As Dr. Clark says as well, we've got a historical discontinuity. It's called interference in communications. It's, it means that they've actually put a block in there. But let me get on with that. I'm hoping this, that's a, a little bit. There's a, an introduction to the timeline. I have a structure I'm going to show you now. This is, these are the levels, what we call the presentation is basically led and bronze. 
we're doing today, we're going to do some archaeology. We're going to be digging in to the stuff that they didn't teach us in school or we forgot about or we forget to apply the simple basics of what uh, that gives us a grounding of understanding. I always remember every time I say this, uh, I remember there's a book by Walter Rodney that was written called uh, The Brilliant Scholar, Walter Rodney, uh, Pan-Africanist. Mm -hmm. um, it's called The Groundings with My Brothers. And The Groundings, if you ever go into The, uh, the Art of War by Sun Tzu, or those of you who are the great, um, the great philanthropists who like to give money for... Uh, uh, sick animals the only thing is we don't know they're sick when we back them i'm talking about the guys who spend time in the bookies <laughs> now what, what happens is uh you always look at the going the grounds the groundings on which you're going to be uh, uh going into battle the, the race horses move some horses go better on harder ground than others is it firm is it soft is it whatever we got to understand the groundings the the the, the foundations on which we're building things and it's all about the balance, how we get the balance, which is seeking my art in a very practical sense. But we'll get onto this. So lead and bronze, we're gonna go into the lead tonight. These are some of the basics. Like I said, the alchemic structure is a medieval forerunner of chemistry, concerned with the transmutation or changing of matter. This is what we call in, in, uh, in the chemetic times, the blacksmiths or the followers of, were the followers of Heru. It's what we call in Yoruba, we're gonna call that, that's Ogun the transmutation of matter. Please listen to Professor James Small, who'll be ex who can explain all of those facets that, uh, that when we're talking about our Orishas, we're talking about our, uh, the, that what leads our head, our nature, and how we apply ourselves in our day-to-day -day activities. It's not walking like hieroglyphs, so that these are practical dynamics which we need to be applying in our day-to-day -day life without apology. Let me say that again, without apology. No one else on this planet steps. Uh, you see, there, there's an old track by Heatwave back in the day, 1975, called Ain't No Half Stepping. Ain't No Half Stepping. It's a double negative, by the way. It's bad grammar. But Pink Floyd can say we don't need no education, but we know what they meant. But what, we got, what we've got to do is get to this thing. There's, no, there's a commitment in the way that we live. And it's one thing without apology. So if we've been made to feel scared of ourselves because anything that we do spiritually is considered negative by some of the most heinous behaviors that's ever hit anywhere on the planet, we've got to get that out of our heads. Deal with that without apology. The biggest thing that people know about alchemy for was turning lead into gold, lead to gold, or finding of a universal elixir. So basically this structure, as I say, the foundation there's a symbol there, I'll explain why. We've got history, and the key thing is about your brain hemispheres. The one thing they well, one key thing they didn't teach us in school. After all, the, we're in school 14,300 hours from the age of four years old to 16. 14,300 hours. That's until we leave. Did they teach you about your brain? Hell no. Why? Because they want to mess with it. I nearly said a bad word there, I'm sorry. They want to mess with our brain so that we can be conditioned to buy, to be controlled, to be fearful, et cetera, et cetera. And it's very, very important that if you're going to be a citizen, a world citizen, a taxpayer, a member of society, that you are fully cognizant of what's going on, that you can use your brain power, your, your mentality. You can use all of those things. And if we have not researched the, look, the ancients were telling us all of this with the netter, with the na natures of God. The key one I'm always got, I've got in my shrine there. Over there, I'm looking there, there's my art and Chihuti, twin together. Twins. These are things talking about the right and left hemisphere of your brain. And so from that, that foundation, we got to do so a little bit of excavation tonight with that. When we go above ground, we got here, we expand this and notice I spell history with a Y. Why is that? Because hist is a Greek word, means womb, hysterical, hysterectomy. For instance, someone who's hysterical is basically acting like a woman. And so, yeah, yes, exactly. But we know when the going gets tough, that a set gets going, or ISIS or a set gets going, 
and it's that which goes and completes cycles and, and brings forward the next the next generation that will change things. So when I say here, history, I spell with a Y. On the timeline, you'll see there's a yellow line goes all the way down the timeline. And on top of that yellow line are the dates that have been decided on by historians. Each people, uh, Muslims have got the Hajira. The uh, Jewish people have got their own dating system. All the different people, uh, Molefi Asante, Molefi Kiti Asante, called ABA, the age of beginning again. So he started a, a, a cycle, a timeline from 1619 when Africans were landed in the USA. Oh, well, it wasn't the USA then, in North America. So what happens is the most important thing is that yellow line, which is a golden thread, which is the mitochondrial DNA held by your mama, by, by the mother, by the mother principle. And that is what we tap into. It's like a plug being tucked into the socket. This is the male part. This is the male fitting on, on the plug. But the socket is where the power is held. That's why the pharaohs had to marry into the lineage. Never mind these things that tell you about people marrying the sisters and all that other thing. That's an interpretation. It's like if I, if I said, oh, Sister Sh Shanice, oh, is she your sister? Or I say, oh, Brother Ben, is that your brother? No, it ain't. It's, a, it's addressing a relationship, mm -hmm. a familiar relationship, a family relationship. So when we start talking about our family, we're talking on a wider level. You've got to get by all these things. It's a, it's a, by these things. And we've got to acknowledge our, our history. My son will be on 24th of October, day after the creation date by Bishop Usher. Uh, um, piece of craziness there. What happens is he, he's, going to be, um, he's going to be 14 years old. I don't oh, get on well nice. with his mother now. Mm -hmm. But I have to send her flowers. I have to say to her, thank you for the boy's life. Yeah. I made an investment and I got a return on the investment. Yeah. And I got, it's got to be celebrated. And the generative power of the human life, of the human family, is your mama. And that's why every birthday is Mother's Day. Started now instead of waiting. Every birthday is Mother's Day. You should be celebrating your mother. And don't say, mm -hmm. oh, I celebrate my mama. It's like those people, oh, I've got Black History Month. No, we did Black... I celebrate Black History Month. Oh, shut up. It's a focus point. It's a focus point. Mm -hmm. That's why we need to have that energy and build our cultural capital. Mm -hmm. Never mind dissipating and everybody else jumping on that. Get it so we celebrate our origin. Mm -hmm. We have that strength and our power that's within us, our DNA. And we need to start living that thing out. I'm not shouting too much, sorry. No, you're not. <laughs> no, okay, you're not. okay. So the history... That's what the lineage timeline is about, is expanding the consciousness. So we get out of this piece of history, yet yeah, important, enslavement is important. However, every time we're spending time there, it's a time we're being reminded of someone else controlling us. And a lot of people have no identity because they don't want to be African. But it's like James Small says, how can you claim that you want to be free when the one thing you'll be when you're free is the one thing you don't want to be, which is an African. So why, why we got to get that dynamic go to expand the consciousness. So all the different people, the people you've got coming on the show, the, the, the people that we read in, that we're what, well, mainly watching these days, the people that we're watching and listening to and whatever, it's to expand the consciousness. But at some mm -hmm. point, we've got to act on that. Absolutely. So when we mm -hmm. start with the thing, start with your birthday, give thanks to your mama, Right. Mm -hmm. In my case, I've never met my father. If I catch the rascal at some point, you know, I can I say I can say thanks, pops, or whatever, but never met him, seen him, even a photograph. So it's a case mm -hmm. of that. But I said I, I've just recently started to celebrate in Igbo. We call it my Amunna, the Amunna, the father's lineage. Mm -hmm. And just this year, in this on my birthday, I started celebrating mm -hmm. that Amunna, my father power, my masculine power. Instead of just being focusing on the female, please, these things, those of you who are Christianized, right? It says one of the commandments says, Honor thy father and thy mother, so thy days might be long upon the land the Lord thy God giveth thee. So if you're a Christian and you've got that Judeo Christianic background, what are you doing staying in an enslaved mindset? I know what it is. The Pharaoh, he was wicked, him persecute Moses. <laughs> Which pharaoh went? Which pharaoh went? Tell me when that was. Because mm -hmm. it don't say anything in the Bible about which pharaoh. Cecil B. DeMille, the cheeky bastard, 
turns, sorry for my language, turns around, what does he do? He says it's Pharaoh Ramesses, the, the, the second, and Setai Wan, who the two pharaohs he puts in the film, they weren't around till 200 years after. Oh my God. They say Moses was. <laughs> 200 year gap. But this is a, they can get away with it if you don't know your history. Mm -hmm. I don't even want to get into Woody Strode and whatever, and, and then they should, what they, they showed there, that's for another time. But please expand the consciousness, get the thing, and use your history as Marcus to turn around and say, No, you can't lie to me like that. But then look, there's a healing level we need to have where we start to look at our life cycle, our lifeline, the experiences we've had. So sitting down talking to these brothers who've murdered. And whatever the highest form expression of destruction in the human family is that thing of murder. They've murdered it. But then what I'm saying to them now, it's time to confront that so that they don't pass that on. That they've got to go about the healing for themselves and then help with the healing of other people. Mm -hmm. Because they've committed that thing. And so therefore the healing level, you can't go to it. Look at the number of times. Yeah, we were slaves. We uh, they slaved us. Look what they did to us. They did this. They did that. Whatever. You can't keep talking about that and then not heal it. It's like, you see, working in prisons a long time, I've worked with rapists. And you know what? Rapists don't mind talking about rape because it's a reminder of their power. Hmm. Think, what do you think for one minute? Those people, those people who slaved hmm. black people, slaved Africans, we're murdering their own women at the same time. Go check the history. 1480 to 1780. They were killing their own women, calling them witches at that time. Mm -hmm. They were murdering their own working class peasants, their own, their, their, their own thing at that time. They were sending their people to war later in mass, mass murder, industrial level murder in the First and Second World Wars. Do you think for a second they care about whether you're upset about being slaved or not. Mm -hmm. So like I said, remember that rapists do not mind talking about rape. They, they might, oh yes, I'm so sorry, or whatever. No, it's a reminder of their power. When you're going into the thing talking about enslavement, it's a reminder for those who did it that, yeah, we've got power over you and we're still messing around with you. Mm -hmm. And every time we go into that thing, you've got to be ready. It's like, look, martial arts, Martial arts, boxing. When you punch in martial arts like this, this turn punch, it puts tension across your back, your back muscles, shoulders, everything. It's like, it's like if you go to, uh, uh, you study, I, I, I came through Second World War because of my dad. He, he was mad interested. He, he was, uh, my dad who raised me, he was a prisoner of war with the Japanese. He went down to, he went round to Singapore, round Cape Horn. He, he, he got there and he was only there two weeks and then he was in a POW camp. But he was fascinated with shipping and the big battleships that they had in the Second World War. Every time they boom, they fired their guns, they mm. damaged their in infrastructure. Yeah, they were firing that way, but the mm -hmm. recoil was damaging, damaging. So they had to go and get a refit. They had to get a refit. Martial arts punching this way, the Chinese style more is upright. But in martial arts, you twist, you put tension. You're meant to spend as much time healing and massaging yourself in martial arts as you are with the activity. Because mm -hmm. for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Mm -hmm. Now, th these are the balances. This is what we call in my art reciprocity. What goes around comes around. What you sow, so shall you reap. So all mm -hmm. the time you're spending cussing down white folk and not talking about reconstructing yourself, mm -hmm. what do you think is going to be happening? What do you think is going to be happening? How do we repair that damage? And like I call it, dam age. The age of the dam. When you got your flow, the flow like the River Nile, the, 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 that flow that's going on, you got that flow. But then what happens if you dam it? Like it happened in the River Nile, that happened in 1902, when the British dammed the River Nile. It lost its nature. You no longer had to be careful in the River Nile of crocodiles and hippos. Why? Because they're behind the dam. They couldn't get down. They killed all those things that were down there already. You, you, you lost that part of your nature where you had to be careful. You had to watch yourself. You had to be vigilant. You had to be sharp. Just like they're turning around today and making everything so, so easy for our, for our people, for 
for children and everybody else. It's so, so, we, but, and so much so, it's like, it's like in the Matrix when they turned around and said, they tried to do a form of the Matrix, but the, it was so comfortable, human beings wouldn't accept it. Mm. It's like we're so used to being conditioned to being enslaved and everything else, colonized, that we've got to find trouble. We'll find it wherever it is. But what I'm trying to say is, every time you're speaking about enslavement and all about the damage and the heat and things, we've got to be spending as much time healing as well. Get that. Action, reaction. We got to be in control of that dynamic and get the healing done. On the next level here, self-control and focus. The symbol of the Sphinx. When I was that, that down in Egypt recently, going through the the uh, um, going through the, the temple by the Sphinx, and that was the gateway to the Giza Plateau. And as you went in there, you look, and then you got the Sphinx is right by you, and then the great the Great Pyramid behind, Middle Pyramid over there. That was the gateway up there. The Sphinx is the guardian to the higher levels. And what's it talk about? Self-control and focus. Do you think sphinx, sphinx, uh, sphincter muscle, the uh, sphincter muscle in your in the pupils of your eyes and in your anus, and sphinx is another word for asphyxiate. So is that to get to grips with things, the opening and closing? There's a lot of things we need to get to grips with. Like I said, at my age now, I'm learning even more and more and more. Get to grips with my diet. Get to grips with what I'm putting in my system. Get to grips with the finances. Get to grips with everything I can get to grips with. And that's the self-control and the focus. Remember the Sphinx is a, a statue of Heru. Heru, right eye and left eye. There's an interaction there with the right eye of analysis, left eye of reflection. All of those things. These people that left us these messages. What a message to, to lead there from how many thousand years ago, way beyond pyramid ages and all that business. What a message that the human head has to be on the body, on top of and control the body of the, of the lion. Oh my gosh. And this is what, exactly what many people haven't done, especially the brothers that I'm working with in prison, where they've allowed themselves to, for whatever reason, to carry out certain acts. Well, what's the ultimate of the top platinum, uh, platinum, the ascension? Absolutely none of my business. Whatever, whatever you want to do to ascend is up to you. But then there's a capstone to be reached. Whatever route you want to deal with. I just put a lotus blossom there. The lotus, by the way, in Europe is the Sphinx. That's the Sphinx. Sorry, the rose is the rose. So this represents the, the what? The universal matrix. The universal matrix. It's a symbol in Kemet of the spiritual lands. Of that of the white crown. The matrix. Oh, my gosh. Matrix means womb. Literally means womb. That's M-A-T, wow. Mata, mother. Matrix is the womb. That's where your father's sperm hit your mother's egg. It, it went to 2 to 4 to 8 to 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1028, 1028. And what goes on is that that's binary cell division. Wow. The, the egg divided, but it multiplied in size. It subtracted from its original mass and added size. All the generations live within you. And you mm. are, if you can see yourself now, go look in the mirror. That's what I had, was it Leonard Jeffries and Professor Edward Scobie laughing in my face when I said, I find it hard operating without an elder. This is when I was younger and I was hot. My temple was hot. I said, I find it hard operating without an elder. And they laughed in my face and I got vexed with them. I said, cussed. And they said, Paul, the reason you don't have an elder is that you're not meant to have one. What you need to do is look in that mirror over there and you've got to become the elder that you need now. This is when I was 30, 30 years old, 31 years old, sorry, 32 years old I was. You've got to become the elder that you need now. You've got to become that person. And so that's what you say. I, you know what? I am the living, breathing, walking, talking representative of every ancestor who's ever lived. I'm here, I'm now, I'm living. Not could, should, would, dealing with things. And you've got to remember that. This is the thing. Every time you got that, that idea of a timeline, no mind that tight lineage timeline, what's inside you? Down your mother, down, down your mitochondrial DNA. Why would you be turning around and looking for, oh, well, they can do that. Oh, they're not doing it. Oh, look at it. <laughs> You're there repping what? What kind of power have you got on you? Wow. <laughs> wow, they've done a job on us, man. So anyway, this is, a, this is the first page in the timeline after the cover. It's the brain hemispheres. 
I, I don't care. I, I saw uh, brother Buddy Laria and uh, that Arsenal fan that's on the, the, the does the work with him. But I don't I don't like brother Nat, I think he's called. He supports Arsenal for that, like that, Mark, whatever he's called. All them Arsenal supporters, and we beat them the other week as well. So it's, it's great. So anyway, uh, the, this the brain hemispheres, they're doing something <laughs> about how does your mind work? And I always put that there. I'll explain this in the uh, it's in deeper, but when you're I, I I saw the golden mask for the first time in the uh in the museum in Cairo, and I was breathtaking, man. I was like, damn. That is some craft, artwork, and whatever. And these are the messages. You got the vulture and you got the cobra. It's right and left hemispheric functions. Go check it out. It's, it's very important. And the word discipline, first four letters say disc and the last four letters say line. The word in the middle, ip. Ip, the ip is Greek for horse. And what happens is a true power comes when you got the function of your right and left hemisphere acting together. This is why I always say, this is a little quote I made myself. I said, the brain is like the earth, as both have hemispheres. What happens mm -hmm. in the brain, we call the mind. And what happens on the earth, we call the world. And guess what? Whoever controls the mind, controls mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. But further, whoever controls their mind, will control their world. And that's a very important facet. You look for other people to control it. No, sir. Look for inspiration by all means. Look for those things. But we've got to get the drivers now. Get the drivers. And watch this. Even the most simple thing of being an example to your child, to children, just to people around. It's not about what you say. It's how the watchers move. It's how the watchers move. What do, what do you do? Do you help people? Or is it do you hinder people? Take the, the stops that Dr. Wilson, Dr. Francis Cress Wilson said, about, I think it's the 10 stops, like stop gossiping, stop dropping litter, stop just those basic damn things. I always remember I was in Manchester. I gave up, there's a, a group of a street organization there called the Gooch. And one of the, one of the guys, the heads of the Gooch, we got into my car and he was at a takeaway. And uh, we we're driving along. And he finished eating, he opens the window and throws the thing out. I emergency, did an emergency stop them, pull over. I said, yo, brother, what the, what, what's going on? He says, sorry, Pete. You understand me? Went and got the, went and got the paper, went and got the wrapper to put it in a bin. Oh, you're giving someone a job. No, it's small things, those small dynamics, small things that build, build this thing. Look at the Ungus of Saba. And they're talking about in the Ungus of Saba, it says that, uh, uh, was it? We, every time we leave somewhere, we go somewhere, leave somewhere, is it better for our having been there? Have we improved it? Or have we just gone in and criticized and not gone? Mm -hmm. I ended up doing five conferences from 1993 to 1997 in Manchester simply because I went to Leicester and opened my big fat mouth and <laughs> criticized constructively the conference I was at. Mm -hmm. And then ended up, why? <laughs> Put these things, international conference, five years of my life. I'll have to get, I'll have to forward you because the, the conference is, the, the actual content's available online now. Mm -hmm. First Cuts, if you go to First Cuts, Manchester, is that those conferences are all online. Milana Karenga, Jocelyn Maxime, Mary C. Lewis, Leonard Jeffries, uh, Malefi Asante, Tony Browder, Pat Newton, Rosalind oh. Jeffries. Uh, um, what's about history? Uh, 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 oh gosh, James Smalls on there, Asa Hilliard, Charles Finch, or my, all, all these different people on there that we brought over. Oh. And, and it, that was just service, man. Just It was a pleasure to do. It was service. And I tell you what, brothers and sisters from Bristol, Liverpool, London, all came working voluntarily, all the Mancunian wow. brothers and sisters. I had a staff of 72 people. The mm, conference wow. went from uh, uh, 350, the first conference, we went up to about 750. We're okay. oversubscribed and everything. Mm. But that was back then. You understand mm -hmm. me? We can pull things off. Auto suggestion, please remember this. The thing called auto suggestion. Our senses are through our organs. 
through our channels, bring things into our left brain. The left brain is like the, um, is like the bodyguard. And the idea of the bodyguard is to block and reject those things using our willpower, those things that are not in our interests. But guess what? Invariably, information comes through. We have to decide whether it's positive or negative. Now think about the. I, I remember being in. Uh, I used to do these sessions down in, down in um, Brixton. I love Christmas. I love Christmas. I've got to say that. I know it's. I know it's BS, but I've got a thing going on about. Yeah, it's short. It. Okay. So it's like Tony Browder. We talked about it. So I fast for three days before Christmas Day, and I've got a big part of it is the rebirth of the sun. It's about the Christ consciousness for me. It's all about those dynamics. And so fasting for the three days from the 21st, so it's the shortest day, then you fast for the solstice. But I, do you know why I love Christmas? Do you know I love why? Christmas? No. It was a one why? time a year. The white boys didn't kick me up. Oh. You know, when I was little, everyone is wow. Christmas spirit or whatever. But I just got to think that I love a Christmas carol. I, I love, I, I love uh, the story of Ebenezer Scrooge. And the idea that it goes about the past, the present, and the future. And so in each of those days, I don't do a thing like, uh, what's it called? Frank Lucas, who used to go down to the, 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 the American Gangster, the film. He, well, Frank Lucas used to go down and basically black out a hotel room, eat once a day, and then back, go backtrack for the entire year, everything he'd gone through, and then go forward with. Well, I do a similar thing. I look at the, what I've done over the year, what I'm doing currently and how I'm feeling, etc., And then I project forward for Christmas Eve on, on Christmas Eve. And then there's a rebirth then, Christmas Day. And I go down to, for the last three years, I go down to the bridge and watch the sunrise down here. I think the first, the first year, I thought, I'd be, I thought I was eating my hand off because I hadn't eaten for three days. Oh, wow. now, I, now I'm just like, now I've got to do things and whatever. I'm tuned into that. But yeah, think about the amount of information that you've channeled into your head and still channeling in, that's negative. And please remember the word negative. Nega means black. Oh. Uh -huh. more linguistically, you go and check these things. The, the entire mm -hmm. thing is actually, check out, there's a, there's a, a the actor, Ozzy Davis, wrote an article for the Dragon's Teeth uh, uh, race, uh, uh, race awareness magazine back in the day, back in the 1980s, late 70s, early 80s. It's called The English Language is My Enemy. And it talks about the way English language uses the terms black and white. So mm -hmm. when you get those kind of things, have a look at that. You can find it online. Have a look. The English language is my enemy. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the person to look at is Neely Fuller. Neely Fuller, oh, Neely Fuller is deep. He goes way, way, way deep. And uh, he's the guy who influenced Dr. Francis Cress Wilson. But when you actually look at this, uh, talk to you, I, I, I'd like you to invite uh, Brother Twilight Bay on. And mm -hmm. Brother Twilight can break those, uh, those dynamics down with, about Neely Fuller, uh, mm -hmm. the 10 areas of people activity, et cetera, et cetera. So what I'm trying to put to you is that this thing of brain and mind, very, very important. And remember when we talk about when Africans rule the world, well, oh. Africans rule their world everybody a world is a construct on the planet the planet is called earth the world is a construct that's why you have the roman world the greek world they all these different worlds that have come and gone mm -hmm. the end of the world is nigh well, well mm -hmm. what does that mean people think the planet will blow up there might be a big reset like there's been i've, I've done a i've done an 850 million year timeline which i've, I've got down here somewhere and it's looking at the information that they teach now about geo, geo, it's a geological timeline. And they say there's been like four great resets when everything's just wiped out and started again mm -hmm. over the millions of years. Mm -hmm. So like the dinosaurs came relatively yesterday, 250 million to 64 million years as, as they get. So the dinosaurs came and went, but mm -hmm. then there's a reset. Yeah. So mm -hmm. getting that idea would be of restriction it took me around about two to three days to reset my mind to be thinking just in terms of like 6,000 years. After being immersed in studying and looking at and how to lay out 850 million years. And mm -hmm. then if you go back and say, well, the earth is in actual fact, they say 4.5 billion years old. 
unless you believe the work of, of uh, uh, Bishop Osher from the 1700s, who said the world was created in 4004 BC on the 23rd of October. Mm -mm. And then someone later said 9 a.m. like God clocked on. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's like if you get that kind of thing, people got these different ideas that they're going to be giving you. But it's very important that you, you make a, you frame it so you get, can get understanding. I'm not going to go into this, but this is basically a chart. I'm going to be producing these for sale on different levels. So this is basically emotional, rational. This is, this is basically the, sorry, this is the, basic chart a bit of, of the functions of the brain hemispheres and the idea is that basically this rhythm spatial awareness the whole picture imagination color dimensions daydreaming focused in and set this is where we're at basically when we were in infant school and then when they send us to school we as we go across to take us more into words numbers analysis sequences you know the bell ringing and whatever whatever lists logic conscious focused out the outer world is important only and then linear con con uh, consciousness so the idea is to shift this over um i always mention this is a song called the logical song by a, a, is a, a white rock band called supertramp and they have a, the, in the logical song they talk about this dimension yeah they talk about this thing about going from basically the you know being a child and then they take us over into our way of thinking. And it's the containers. Look at, if you look at the cycle, the cyclic and the linear, if that's a, a ball on the block, you know that getting someone to think in a block in the square means the square won't move. However, the ball will move anywhere and everywhere. And where we lie is the balance between the two. Those of you who can understand the symbol, look at Vitruvian man, Vitruvian Man by Leonardo da Vinci. And you see that the figure standing straight out is touching the square. The figure that's out, the arms are wide and the arms are up, is at the, set, at the circle. The center of the square is the genitals, that which creates constructs. It, it creates and brings into the so-called world. But the center of the circle goes to the navel, which is how we were formed through our mothers bringing through from the spirit. Some believe that our souls are guided into the body incarnate and our spirits house at the, the moment that the heart starts beating. That's why we learn today. We learn things off by heart. We learn by heart. So the process demand this dehumanization requires rehumanization. We've been dehumanized. We need to be rehumanized to fulfill our power and potential. It means we can't have this construct limiting us all the time. And me, I've got to say to you, I'm a bit like I'm, people I say, what religion are you, P? I say, I'm a Bruce Lee fan. I love Bruce Lee, I love up Bruce Lee because he dealt with systems, not styles. He was like, they say one of the first mixed martial artists because he, he even he was with Gene LaBelle, God rest his soul, Gene LaBelle just passed away. So Gene LaBelle was talk, talking, grappling and fighting. But Bruce Lee was into groundwork, he was into kicking, he was into the boxing, he was into mm -hmm. synthesizing all the different styles that he possibly could to take on to become a fight. Well, I love that. I will use any reference points because if we talk about humanity and then all, all these things, in fact, I had this, uh, I had a bit of a, a, a discussion with a brother because he was going on about, Oh, Europeans, Europeans of uh Europeans lied, they lied to us. And I said, which Europeans? And he's like, ah, well, they lied. And I said, which friggin' Europeans? Now watch this. Are you gonna turn around and say that, for instance, Frank Franz Fanon, who was listening, he was uh who did the wretched of the earth, that drove uh drove the Black Panther Party, Franz Fanon was uh was a friend of Jean Paul Sartre. His idea of existentialism was about a liberate was a relative liberation process for Fanon. Then you've got you've got uh, uh, what's it called Schroller de Lubitz, the French the French Egyptologist and guy who was a big into the esoteric, who sat down in Luxor Temple for fifteen years. Asa Hilliard used his work. So whilst you actually whilst you actually going on or just what black black but yeah you can say that now, 
we're going back. There are people who, and listen to this, have actually sought to tell the truth from all different walks of life. So as I say, by any means necessary, yes, we've got to have the integrity of the sources. You've got to have that. But yeah, you're going to turn away from knowledge? Wow. Wow. The corral, an enclosure for horses, cattle, etc. This is what I covered last time. An enclosure for capturing wild animals, a state of unconsciousness produced to maintain restricted, confused, and dehumanized mentality. And that is one of the key things. And let me say this. In the one, land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. And it means that people, if you, if you get, get to see, I, 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 one of my friends, dear friend, took a, took a name on. I said, why did you take that name? He said, I want an African name. I said, that's an African name. It's a, it's a bloody, uh, what do you call it? It's a, it was a, 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 an acronym. But he thought someone told him, and because he didn't know, he, he took gospel that that was the truth. That's why I love Franz Fanon, the end of Black Skin, White Mass. He says, oh, my body, make of me a man, a mind, who always questions. Always be questioning. I always laugh. I said, when you look at Tutankhamun or the pharaohs, and they, got the, they have the, uh, the, the covering the, the, uh, the symbol, or the death symbol, and they got the flail and the shepherd's crook. I would say the shepherd's crook looks like a question mark. Always keep questioning. Always question. Question your sources. Yeah? We don't have time to be resting, resting on, on things. This is a decagon, a, a ten-sided shape, a symbol representing the time capture of decades, century, and millennium. They want to keep us contained into the state where European people or the people in power run things. It's called the age of Pisces. They don't want you looking past the age of Pisces. That's why they, 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 that's why they love doing the, the BCAD thing. The age of Pisces where, where this, the, the uh, patriarch, the current, the current mindset and mentality came into being. You need to look at those in a different way. It's something I'm going into uh, bigger in the timeline. These are the qualities within the corral. And what generally happens is all of those things a lot of us run into these things and it's a distraction away from what we're supposed to be doing. <laughs> and so all of these dynamics, yeah, they're important. But the whole idea is one of the key, the key ones, entertainment. Enter, enter to go into tame. Well, look at the contain, detain, retain, maintain. Look at the tame words. And then if once they get you with entertainment, yeah. Yeah, I did. I had to switch off my TikTok. I don't know if you've been seeing it. There's a thing going around as a Muslim brother, and he's talking about China invented TikTok, and all they do is boost the esteem of Chinese children through TikTok, showing them how, you know, betterment, how to better themselves and whatever. But when it comes to the USA, of course, the UK, frigging ridiculous. The stupidness. Not all of it, of course. I had to switch it off. I've been looking there. I'll be there two hours going, wow, look at that cat doing that. I didn't know cats could do that. That's really funny. <laughs> and I said, wait a minute, P, you're supposed to, you're 63 years old. You're not supposed to be looking at stuff like that. I'll have been guy, but it's funny though. Oh, shit, it's funny. But what I'm saying is, I switched it off because it was occupying my time. It's taking possession of me. And I, I love my, my, my Jam Jamaican friends always say, well, man, we run things, things no wrong way. So, so as of that, I, I had to let it go and check these things out. So what's this? These are some of the basics that I'm wanting to put to you. The months. In one year, there are 12 solar months and 13 lunar months. How do, you, how do we get that? How do we get 13 months a year? How do we get that? There are 13 months a year. Now, the funny thing is, I especially like talking to sisters about this because it's the menstrual cycle. And if those of you on the birth control pill, if you're taking it, you'll see it on there. When you, when you get a birth date for your child, the Mandela, that's not the president of South Africa, former president, that's Mandela. The Mandela is a chart 
which balances the solar and the lunar and gives you the because it's nine lunar months that you're in the womb, not not solar months. So there's all of these there's all these dynamics to check out, and so what happens is we we have that natural cycle. I, if I could show you over there, I have a lunar cycle clock. So I've got the lunar cycle going on. So we're heading. It being about two days time, we'll have the full moon. So the three days of the full moon, three nights of the full moon. So it's in information like that, the lunar cycle, the ancients were telling us about and tying things in. I always, when, when, I, when I have my uh, wedding ring, I used to wear on my left, left hand, the gold, I used to balance it with silver on the right hand. The gold, which is the, the uh, masculine energy on the feminine hand. Then the silver, which is the feminine energy, on the masculine hand. So there's a balancing going on. See the symbol the Chinese use? The right and left hemisphere of the brain being balanced at the level of the heart. So all of these messages are there that we're supposed to be checking both of these. But the society we're in only checks for the solar. That's why they showed Osir green. And his body in the mid is cut into 14 or 28 pieces, which is a lunar cycle. It's a month, 28 days. So in 365, if you go 12 times 12 times 28, it will give you 336. You're 29 days shy of 365 and a quarter. So please check these things out. Just check these are basics that you should know. What day of the week? Let's say I'm going to ask you directly, Sister Sister Shanice, what day of the week is the lunar day? Oh, well, I'd have to guess at that. What day is the lunar day? Yeah, yeah. Luna. Mm -hmm. Which is the solar day? Oh, would that be the Sunday? Yeah, so what's the next guess. day? Uh, Monday. Monday. So mon means moon. Uh -huh. and, uh -huh. and it also goes into money as well. Oh, all the moms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the month. You go go to those things. Month, money. Mm -hmm. the, the, and then what? What does the money do? I promise to pay the pay. Uh, I promise to pay the bearer on the amount of some of and all that. Mm -hmm. It was the things that you grew. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, you go Monday. What I didn't put this in the thing, but you do, do, the days of the week, the names of the week. You got Sunday, mm -hmm. Monday, mm -hmm. then Tuesday. T I W was the Norse god of war. Which is why in French it's Mardi or Mars Day. Monday in French is Lundi. And then when you go you go down the week, what's uh what's it? Wednesday is Woden's Day, mm. Odin's Day, the great god. Mm. Thor's Day. It's why talking the Irish. It's the talking in the Irish and they saying, well, tomorrow's a Thor's Day. It's Thor's Day. Mm. Then it's Thor's mama, Freya's Day. Friday is Freya's Day. Then you got Saturn's Day, which mm. is the market day. No, he's, he's a the, Saturn's a Roman god of agriculture. Mm. So we're celebrating their deities every day without realizing it. We're calling on the names of their gods on their deities, are we? Uh, of course. By, by using the the days of the week that they've given us. So uh, rise up, brother Icon. Uh, he did a show today on Galaxy Afiwi, and uh, he was talking about the English language and uh, how we are taught to spell and inadvertently using the language to put spells on ourselves. That's what we're being taught to do. To Check out, you know, check out, the, check out the words like fascination, fascination, uh, glamour. Uh, what's, the, what's the other one? I've got there's a, the list of them. There's a few words I use. They're all occult in their, in their meaning. It's everyday words. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. glamour means to mask with occult power. You make the beautiful appear ugly, the ugly appear beautiful. Hmm. And so mm. when you, you glamorize violence. Mm. So I was going along today and I was thinking about in the First World War, they were getting people to take the, the, the king's shilling. All that, and that was it. There's a statue, I was driving by a statue of Robert, Sir Robert Peel. So the coppers, the coppers. So you, you've got that to glamorize violence, uh, mm -hmm. it, to influence people. Yeah, the supposed inflow from the size of an ethereal fluid supposedly affected the destiny of men, later used as an exercise of occult power. 
So wow. you can't, you can only see the effects of the influence. So for instance, if you, if you were looking at the television or the, mm -hmm. or the, the media online stuff and whatever, mm -hmm. if you had that ability or a mobile phone, for instance, uh, if you had that mobile phone 200 years ago, they'd say you were a witch, they'd burn you. Mm -hmm. So you see that it's like what we call science. So if you go to Africa and they say about, oh, the man knows science or the Caribbean say no science, you're talking mm -hmm. about occult practice. Mm -hmm. But now we'll pick up something. I, I remember I was driving in Manchester and all of a sudden I got a call from Benin in West Africa. This is years ago. And I kind of went, how the hell is that happening? <laughs> but bouncing off satellites and things like that. And I'm going like, okay, okay. So these are the things I've said, go to your basics, excavate the basics, make sure that you know the basics. Because if you don't, you can get caught out with it. I, I'm not going to read all of this. Aikwe Ama in the uh, in his book, The Healers, he talks about he talks about uh, the tongue of the story type teller, and it says such a story told by an unconnected tongue, the middle hurls itself astonished at the ear before the beginning has even had time to be mentioned. The end itself is battered into pieces. The fragments are smashed against the listener's ear, without connections, without meaning, and without sense. Hmm. and so this is how it can be if you don't have a framework that I did the timeline for it's a contextualization tool it's just to place things in context because enough people if you, if you sit down and ask them well where did that happen in comparison to whatever they don't know I know people have been studying things for years I'll, I'll tell you one thing in, in, a, in a minute but let the error raise its own connect correction the speeding tongue forgets connections let the deliberate mind restore them Proud tongue, child of the unknown masters of eloquence, before you leap so fast to speak, listen first to the mind's remembrance. So you say, yeah, there's your remember. You've got, there's an order to the way you do things. But let me, let, uh, says the when and where. He said, did you remember to tell your listeners of what time, what age you rushed so fast to speak? You've got to be able to con contextualize these things. You've got to place them in context. And so did you leave the list of floundering in endless time, abandoned to suppose your story belonged to any confusing age? So let me get to the last part of this. And he says here, what of the place? Let's talk about there. So he says, let the listener know when. Let the listener know where. Then an anonoton born for eloquence, continue your telling. And in the joy of your eloquence, keep faith with the mind's remembrance, lest the teller's forgetfulness spoil the listener's joy. Look. Everything's about forming memories. But then the most important thing, can you recall those memories and bring them back and apply them mm -hmm. at the given time? That's the important thing. It's not about what you know, it's what you can retrieve and apply. Mm -hmm. I remember a boxer called Teofilio Stevenson, a heavyweight from Cuba. And his real main weapon was his right hand. And you just sat there watching him box, poking pot, and then you just set your watch going, okay, when's it going to land? And nine times out of ten, bang, it came. There he was. He had one gift, one shot, and he applied it well. Not a whole heap of knowledge, and you're mm -hmm. doing nothing with it. And that's an important dynamic. So... Space, let me go through this now, mapping the where. I know you've probably seen this. I'm just trying to say to you that understanding all of these dynamics are important because these are kind of things that didn't teach you in school. So we've got the time, identifying the when, and we have space, which we're going to do mapping the where. So it's the when and the where, like Ayikwe Amar says. So perspectives, you've seen these, the Mercator and the Peters maps. You've seen those maps before, yes? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I didn't know about the Peters projection, God, until 1980-something. I think I was in my mid-20s when I saw it. And it talks about the size, the sizes. It's the comparisons. Uh, Jane Elliott, the white lady who does the brown eyes, blue eyes, she deals with this dynamic. What is unfair is to turn around and say it's racist because... The white people, them, we're making the Northern Hemisphere look bigger than the Southern Hemisphere. That's bollocks. It's about using it for, uh, uh, it, it was for, it's, a, it's called, Mercator means the merchant's map. 
So the guy who did it is called Gerhard Kramer. And what it was, using that map and the bearings on it, you could find your way around. It's about navigation. The argument is, Peters was saying, is that it took, for most people who aren't going to be traveling, you should be understanding that the Southern Hemisphere is of high importance and the people living there, usually of color, that they should be turning around and have a fair representation of that map. So the brain-mind relationship is what I put forward before. The right hemisphere of the brain is used more in Eastern philosophy and the left hemisphere is used more in Western philosophy. So there's a thing so that, like I said, goes on in the brain and the world. Whoever controls the mind controls the world. Whoever controls their mind controls their world. Got to stress that we need to know where things are. It's really funny. I was down in Nigeria uh, in Oweri when the Miss World competition was on a few years ago. And it was up in Abuja. And then there was like trouble in Abuja, riots in Abuja because of the Miss World Com, because Mike largely Muslim up there. And uh, what was being said, well, I'm getting phone call. Are you all right, Paul? Are you all right? Well, that's like me being worried about something that took place in Glasgow. You get what I'm saying? It, 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 you know, it's like, do we understand how big the world is where they are? It's like when I was in Brazil, I was living in Brazil. I have friends from London. They're going to go to the World Cup and uh, they wanted to go and watch England play up, in, uh, up in, in, in the north of Brazil. And they said, yeah, we're going to fly into Rio, hire a car, drive up to Manaus. And I went quiet and then I'd start laughing. And they say, well, what's up, Pete? I said, you think it's like flying into Birmingham and driving oh, London and then driving up to Birmingham? Mm -hmm. And they said, well, what's up? I said, it's a five-day drive. Wow. And then you need a boat because there's no roads into Manaus. <laughs> wow. You have to go by the river. You have to go on the, on, in, uh, in, in the uh, Amazon. And they were like, really? Mm -hmm. So I was living in Sao Paulo. It took six hours to fly to Florida from Sao Paulo, halfway down mm -hmm. Brazil. So you get the idea how big these places mm -hmm. are. So mm -hmm. get, getting the kind of discipline... That's going on. The planet Earth is checked by these projections. This is Gerhard Kramer. It's for navigation. It's a navigational aid. That's what it's about. It's not about racism. If a navigator wants to sail from Spain to the West Indies, all they have to do is draw a line between the two points and the navigator knows which compass direction to continually sail to reach their destination using that map. Yet it spans. I'm sorry, I'll explain it here. But Gerhard Kramer, this is when he's living. This is Arno Peters. This is a German, oh, this is a white dude who did the, the uh, Peters projection, which is teaching us more about the sizes of the earth and how big things are. And so he did that in 1974. So you're talking 1569 and 1974. Yeah, that's a difference. So what do we have here? I said, buy this handbook. If you can get it, a new view of the world by Peters, the Peters projection. So remember, I'll be giving you the, the printout of the notes anyway, so you can pick this one up. Um, by the handbook, it shows you the following information. So Peters, he produced this as a political tool. And uh, it said Peters saw the erroneous view of the earth being supplanted in the psychology of the world's population by continued usage of the outdated Mercator projection. His main argument was that the Mercator projection expands the Northern Hemisphere and controls and contracts the Southern Hemisphere where the majority of the world's population live. This, he argues, maintains the interest of European colonial powers in portraying the size and, in turn, the importance of the Northern Hemisphere compared to the South. This, according to the geographer Matt, Matty Rosenberg, is not a new worry in relation to the usage of the Mercator projection. He wrote, the Mercator map has always been a poor projection for a world map, but yet due to its rectangular grid and shape, geographically Ill illiterate publishers found it useful for wall maps, atlas maps, and maps in books and newspapers published by non-geographers. It became the standard map projection in the mental map of most Westerners, or anybody educating us. So it's wrong to say Mercator set it up to be a thing. No, that's not right. But this is why we need to have the idea of what we're looking at in the where. So for instance, 
These are, this is just me I, I, for my book of dumb. The flight pass. Rosenberg said as far back as 1902, the cartographer warned, he, he warned in this map. And it's about your perceptions. You see, I went on the flight path. I thought it was flying to, from the UK to New York. So I went like that. Which did we actually do? We flew up near to Iceland and came down the coast. We went over the curve. Sorry for the flat earthers there, I'm sorry. Yeah, but I'm just saying there was a curve that we flew on. And I was like, damn, I thought we just went straight across. How old was that? I was in my 30s, 1991, I was 32 years old. But I had, I had these idea, this idea. So Peter's main argument, the North, 18.9 million square miles. The South, 38.6 million square miles. So basically, the red area is twice the size of the blue area. Just take that in, because that's how we're being tricked. That's why the ancients gave us the right eye of Heru, the eye of analysis, the eye that will question, the eye of the child in the emperor's new clothes. We've got to be questioning things all the time. It goes here, comparison one, Alaska. 0.6 million square miles. That's the blue part. The red star, Mexico is 0.7. So Mexico is larger than Alaska. You've got here Europe, 3.8 million square miles in blue. The red area, South America, 6.9 million square miles. Almost twice as big. Then we have the comp comparisons of Scandinavia, 0.8 million square miles and India which is 1.3 million square miles so you see these are the, the this is a so think if they're doing this with a map what are they doing with the rest of the history and this is why we need to be vigilant Greenland this is my favorite is not even 1 million square miles and China in red is 3.7 million square miles so the further north you go the more the expansion goes out and the, this, how many, I mean, when I was at school, they used to have a roller. They used to get an ink in geography. They used to open your book and they'd roll the map into your book. And then never questioned it, just took it in. Oh, that's how the world is. And they had it behind the newscasters and all kinds of, oh, wow. So Africa, so, sorry, Soviet Union in blue, 8.7 million square miles. Africa's 11.6 million square miles. It's, a, it's, it's those comparisons that are actually there. How big is Africa? You can put in Europe, Alaska, United States, and China into Africa. To fly down to South Africa, 11 hours from the UK, going straight south. Have a think about how vast that is, how big it is. Someone was said to me, they go like, have you been to, oh, have you been to Africa? I just start laughing. I said, I said, skirted on the out, on the out, on the skirt, outskirts of it a bit to Nigeria, to Ghana, a bit to Cote d'Ivoire, a, a bit to South Africa, a bit to, to Egypt, and what? And I just go like, have you been to Africa? Nah, not really. A couple of places. You understand me? But they they teach that Africa is like a country, isn't it? That's how they tend to. That's how it tends to be put over. The equator mm -hmm. on the. Uh, this is the equator. The halfway mark, 18.9 million square miles versus 38 million square miles. And then if you go like this, if, if that's one size, what they've done is no longer the equal halfway line because you've got two and a bit up above the line. Be alert, be vigilant, check these things, question the thing. Even I've been dealing with this for years and years and years and years. I still check things out. I still have to check, double check what's actually been given to me. Because, you know, how many continents? Here's one. How many continents are there? Five or seven? What would, what, what would you say, sister? Are there five or seven continents? Oh, I would say, um, well, I would have said less, actually. So I'm going to go with five. You go with five. Mm -hmm. So a, con a continent is a continuous landmass. Mm -hmm. 
So mm -hmm. what do we have there? Then we have continu continuity. So these five. Mm -hmm. You notice mm -hmm. what the last one did though? Mm -hmm. You notice that one? Yeah, yeah, it's gone horizontal it, it, instead of vertical. No, 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 no. What, what? It goes right across Europe. Oh, okay. Asia yeah. and Europe. That's why, why land people mass. are called Caucasians. Caucasians. Yeah. So, uh, so you see, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They, they, they put this in there. So you've got America, Antarctica, Australasia, Africa, and Asia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Europe is the Western Peninsula of Asia. Mm -hmm. Europe used to mean Central Greece, then the Greek, whole Greek mainland, then the land behind Greece. That's from the Oxford Universal Dictionary. I'm not putting something else out. That's the Oxford Universal Dictionary. I've got copies of it here. So what, that's what they say. And then they applied it. So what happens is the seven continent theory the division of America at Panama, and then there. And then what you do, you what to do is like North America, Antarctica, Africa, Asia, South America, but then they have Europe. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh -huh. so I once asked these children in school, I was, I was doing a geography session, and I said, what do the continents have in common? And this boy said, they all begin with A and end with A, sir. I went, oh, that has, except for <laughs> Europe, e, except for Europe. E. <laughs> so they've separated themselves off the rest of the Asian continent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you got the Russian people, then you go to the, the uh, Southern Asian. So this is the, the dynamic that they've actually got. So it's an imaginary division of Europe. It's a very, very important uh -huh. so, dynamic. Yeah, sorry. Let, no, I'm going to say let's uh, see if we've got any questions, any comments in the chat that we can bring in uh, because we are 30 minutes or so away from the, just over 30 minutes away from the top of the hour. And uh, we know how quickly time flies. So, family, family, if you've got any questions that you'd like to ask, please do just drop them in the chat, okay? Don't leave it until uh, it's too late. Uh, before you put your questions to Brother Paul. So uh, let's uh, maybe give you one or two more slides, Paul, so give our, our audience an opportunity to put some questions in the chat to you. Okay. You say to carry on? Yes, yes, please do. Okay, and I'm just going to give them a moment or two uh, okay. to put some questions because uh, there's a little bit of a delay. So uh, okay. they'll, they'll so get what I'm saying in a moment or two. Yeah, in a minute or two. So there are five true continents, and they are celebrated by the Olympic rings. And then there are seven taught kind. This is what they're teaching children today. This is what's being taught to children. So you see what the idea is. And then Europe, by the way, is expanding. So what they couldn't do in the Crusades, they now, through politics and cartography, if you check the boundaries of Europe now, you'll see that Turkey is part of Europe. Now, mm -hmm. I remember, I, like I said, because of my age, I remember the uh, Eurovision Song Contest. And um, back in 1968, I think it was, there was a song by uh, Esther and Abby O'Farin called Cinderella Rockefeller. You're the lady, you're the lady that I love. You're the lady, the lady. I remember that. <laughs> so what's this? What is what is Israel doing in Eurovision? Mm. And that's before the expansion down by Turkey round there. Mm. And so many people is like, well, oh, wait a minute, what's what's this? So a European outpost. That mm -hmm. was developed to control Suez is one mm -hmm. of the ideas that was put forward. Mm. But I'm just saying about geography here. There's nothing else I'm looking into with this. It's just saying that, yeah, there was that presence there from the Balfour Declaration. Yeah. So the idea of a, a Jewish homeland where people could be free from persecution. Mm. So anyway, so the Europe, the term Europe has had three main phases of application. It says. The Oxford Universal Dictionary, 1974, page 688 states, 
as Europa is first applied to central Greece, which is there, the red dot, then later to the whole Greek mainland, and then to the landmass behind Greece. And it goes like that. So what we actually have there, Europe is therefore not a continent, is the Western Peninsula of Asia, hence the so-called racial group Caucasian. Now, I'm going to give you a piece, of, uh, a piece of information, right, which will help you understand this thing, right? Because if you have a look at a group of white guys, they go out, you know, weekends and whatever, general, go out drinking, yeah? And then you just go drinking, they're like dance roots in. And what, what do you always want at the end of the night? A curry. <laughs> That's how deep it is. Yeah. It's really, really deep. So, so you see, that's the Caucasian route. But I tell it as a joke, but I'm kind of not joking, because when you get into the idea of race, start to break down that factor, then you know what a nonsense things are. Mm -hmm. Crazy, some crazy guys from the 19th, 18th and 19th century invented the idea called race. Race was merely put together to keep poor people separated. And that's why I said, watch this. Same way I say rapists don't mind talking about rape because it reminds them of their power. They don't mind anybody. And this is the thing I learned. 19, 1989, I went into Garth prison for the first time, 33 years ago. I'm there with my suit and everything, thinking I was like being like radical and all this. Mr. Smooth walking in the suit, my Fred Perry shirt and going in there, you know, like, yeah, radical, radical with a big box of, consciousness books and all of this and I'm going to do yeah yeah and I had my security talk they said we don't mind you bringing that in as long as it's not causing any riots or anything it's all right they don't mind the division of separation mm -hmm. they don't mind it mm -hmm. that's why why do you think Garvey met with the Ku Klux Klan why do you think it is that the uh, nation of Islam met with uh, Rock, what's it called Rock, Rock, Rockwell or whatever it's called mm -hmm. the Nazi they don't mind that separation because it keeps people off balance. They can maintain control. What do they do? Take a little thing out there, make a little riot there, make a thing, someone dies there. Everybody's up in arms and whatever. And the kids, yeah, okay, right. Here, all, 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 and everybody's at each other's throats. Mm -hmm. What's the puppeteer doing? Mm -hmm. What's the puppeteer doing? So you see, it's things like that. We need to be sharp on. We need to be sharp on it. Oh yeah, there's uh, we got a few. I think we've probably got a couple of questions in the chat. Uh, let's let's go over and uh, put these to you, brother Paul. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> uh, Clive says uh, we are only counting the landmass. We can see above the sea and not the landmass that is still connected under the sea. Uh, let's uh, get your thoughts on that. Uh, very of, interesting uh, comment there. Barbados. Sorry? <laughs> Barbados. So I missed that. Barbados. Yeah. Uh -huh. Barbados. Barbados is part in the Caribbean and part on the Atlantic shelf. Right. So they're talking about the plates, the continental plates. That's the theory. Mm -hmm. So you have a thing called plate tectonics. So they say there's separation, but as a brother saying, yeah, beneath the sea, that you'll, mm -hmm. you'll see these things, but they say that there's these movements going. Uh, for instance, when I, when, I, when I was teaching, I coined the phrase educational tectonics because like the vulture, the right hemisphere of the brain, I used mm -hmm. to go into a classroom, still do it now, I pick the vibes up because vultures don't fly high, they ride up on the air currents. Mm -hmm. So the same mm -hmm. way a seismograph picks up the, the clashing of these continental plates, that create, that they go up, they call down, they create volcanoes, the volcano eruptions, they talk about earthquakes and all of these things. So beneath the surface of the sea, as brother's saying, yeah, things are there. But for instance, Barbados is flat, they say, because the, the uh, east side, east side is quite rough. The sea is quite rough. The, mm -hmm. wet, the west side is, and the, and the north is calm, is calmer, sorry. And that's in the Caribbean, but it's mm -hmm. on the it's on the edge of the plate. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I always I always go to that thing about Barbados, because it's a it's an interesting it's a very interesting dynamic. The rest of if you think about it, the rest of the Caribbean is volcanic in nature, and has mountains. 
-hmm. which is why mm -hmm. in Barbados they didn't have as many uh, maroons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So maroon activity all the across the Caribbean, guided by Orisha practice, etc., was was uh, was the spirit of resistance that was there. Mm -hmm. Which is about once again I'm saying about groundings. You've got to go to the ground, look to the nature, and um, and why uh, and why and how these things can go. So thank you, brother, for that because it's a very important thing on the sea there, but beneath mm -hmm. they say these things are very slow, timely activities that are going on with the earth in nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, rise up, rise up, uh, Clive, for that question there. Uh, Sister Afrojamo says, uh, plus I believe that. The flight time between the Caribbean and Africa is much less than they say. A Jamaican Rasta sister talks about this. I uh, can't remember her name right now. You know, I do recall um, there was either a TikTok or something like that that was going around social media. Uh, I think it was put out by a pilot who said that something like, the flight time, the real flight time between uh, the Caribbean and Africa is something like three hours. I think it was between, is it Barbados and West Africa? Something like three hours. But uh, the way we have to go at the moment, following the flight path is via Europe. So you get the impression that, you know, it, it, the distance is considerable. But have we'd a, have to go back to one of your maps and look at the landmass again to see. Well, have, have, a, have a thing yeah. that, they say that part of Brazil, the top mm. like Salvador, which is the northeast, is almost due south of West Africa. Ooh. So there's an overlap, but you don't see it on the map. Mm. When I was down mm. in Brazil, when I was living in Brazil, there was a lot of talk of, uh, I think it was Ghana, was going to yeah. start doing deals with, um, with Brazil on flights, et cetera, et cetera. But it's a thing okay. to, keep, to keep the third world countries, or even though Brazil's like up there, second world really, but it's to keep the separation going on. So Absolutely, the, that's the think, intention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, take the Orisha. Yeah, and this is, this is a funny thing. We, we, we look at that, a lot of our connectivity is actually in the spiritual practice. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But then that's been demonized so much that yeah. we don't want to get into that. Uh -huh, but when uh -huh. I, I was in... I was in, uh, I, th I think it was, uh, I've been 2015, so I've been, in, I've been in Brazil nearly two years. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize it was only one day one of these crazy people driving out from a side road. I slammed on, I was taking my son to the gym. Mm -hmm. It came from a side road. And I, as I stopped and I looked, I went, what? And there was a, an Orisha park in Brasilia mm -hmm. with the main, the main 20, is it 21 Orisha? Big statues as well, not small things, big statues. Wow. But well, then uh -huh. when I went down there, it was the uh it was mainly white people leaving all oh. the uh uh it's white people leaving all the offerings, etc. Wow, yes, they know the power of our culture. Uh they know the power, yeah, and so they're right there. They they get that knowledge that we don't get in the how many hours that we're in school. 14,300 14, hours, you said, that we spend in school. Imagine that family. We're spending 14,300 hours in school between the age of, was it four and 16? Four to 16. Yeah, yeah. Four to 16. And look how little we learn about our history. And I don't think any of us have learned anything that you've just shown us there uh, about the real size or of these uh, different continents uh, and countries. Depends, on yeah, it depends which schools you go to. Yes, yes, indeed. And sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes it's there. So there's an old track by Star Guide. Those of you old school music, like there's a group called Star Guide, and uh, I think it was they did. The, there's a film called Car Wash, and Star Guide, mm -hmm. Star Guide had a track in that. But this is from a film called Which Way Is Up. So mm -hmm. I always remember that. But who's to say which way up in space we are? Modern cartography, map making has taught us that the direction north is at the top and south is at the bottom. Mm. And everybody in the world sees that, sees it that way, or even what is at the center of the world. So mm -hmm. here are some examples of American centered maps. So this is what the old Batman, old Batman, when it was on TV, this is a map that was behind the newsreader. It's a Mercator mm -hmm. projection, but with mm -hmm. America in the center. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, then you see and look how small Africa is <laughs> oh god yeah 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 and, that, and that's what you, you're being fed that's, that's uh, if you don't learn to question what you see 
you know so i i do i do uh um I do a session where I just look at the role of the eyes of Heru. And you've got to analyze and then reflect. And then it breaks down. And then there's a third eye, which is about putting things into action. And so, so that, that constant, it's a constant feedback loop going on all the time when we're doing the analysis. And that's what the ancients knew. So they, this is the kind of thing you question, does that look right? So then what we do, we have a political and then physical geographical map. Those are, those are the two types there. Then you go to here. So this is like the, um, the thing I was saying. If, we, if, I, if it was joined the other side, this is a Chinese map. But you see that Brazil on this side here would be talking around here. Does this make sense? Yeah, yeah, come. This, yes, this go is through that. Sino centric. Sino centric is a Chinese centered map. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but. So, where's the overlap? Well, the, over, the overlap here, you see, when you see this, if you see a map like this in geography books in British schools, mm -hmm. it's when they're doing what they're calling the circle of fire, which, is, which are volcanoes in the Pacific. So you'll see maps like this, but generally mm -hmm. they'll cut Africa out. They only show you part of the part of the structure, focusing mm -hmm. on the Pacific. Mm -hmm. But this is site the Chinese see themselves at the center, mm -hmm. the same way you had the American centric map. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then these are maps that are endorsed by the uh, National Geographic Society, the Van der Grinten map. So this is 1922. So this mm -hmm. shape of map has been there once again. It's expanded out the Northern Hemisphere. Then you got the Robinson projection. And this is where you start to see things evening up. And mm -hmm. then this uh, number three is the, the, the Winkle, tri uh, Winkle triple projection. And this is definitively getting more sight, get the size more uh, balanced. Does mm -hmm. this make sense? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Still, still a discrepancy if you look at Greenland at the top and you look at China, you know mm -hmm. where China is. However, they're starting to do these corrections. So, mm -hmm. southern orientation. How about that map? Mm -hmm. So it's, re it's really... It's upside down. That's the real way up. Yeah, but you see, you said it's upside down. So therefore... Whoa, well, it's the real way up. <laughs> Double negative. Yeah, it's the right way up. Wait, remember the, yeah. the idea taught by uh, Dr. Ben and others that the, the river Nile flows from south to north. Yeah. And so they said it's up south. It goes up into Africa, mm -hmm. down to the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is that our origins are up south. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, in my classrooms, I always get a piece of two pieces projections, but I always say, I always put one so-called upside down next to the other. And every time, I always remember when I used to do that in my classrooms, I always go, why is that map upside down? I say, which way, is it, which way is the earth in space? It's just it's not on its side. You understand me? No, well, I used to say that we're not spinning that way around or whatever. Or the disc is upside down in space or the disc is on its side if you're a flat earther. Who's to say the way around it is? But these are perceptions that we get that yes. is the way we always look at them. We take yes, them for granted. Yeah, that's how so the mind has been trained to see the world, isn't it? Trained yeah. and contained. Trained uh -huh. and contained. So uh -huh. shaking it out and get the question, that's why I kind of I might I admire people who think about the flat earth. I was seeing a lady uh who was a flat earther. Uh -huh. You know, we were taught we don't, don't do that. We we were and so we talk about it and, and whatever. And I do you know something? It's like when you talk about aliens. I ain't saying anything about I'm not going to turn around saying, oh, yeah, there are aliens and whatever, whatever. But I'm not going to be saying there aren't any aliens. Mm -hmm. I put things on the table. I'll go, okay, then. When the evidence comes, I'm ready for it. I'm open. I'm ready. <laughs> I used Let's to like, back. yeah. There's, a, there's an advert with Michael Jordan used to be on. And it showed that when people were passing the ball to him, yeah. He was already making his move. Oh, yes. He was not yes. just standing there ready to catch the ball. Yeah, he was yeah. already making his move. Yeah, yeah. That's how all the coaches are. Uh -huh, uh -huh. They're making their moves. 
That's right. And that's how we've got to be preparing to make our moves as well. We've got, um, and this is what this history is all about and what this knowledge and teaching is all about. And now we have to start thinking about, okay, how are we going to apply this knowledge? You know, what use are we going to be putting it to when we get this knowledge and we go away with it today? Are we going to be sharing it with our young uh, members of the family, the younger members of the family, so that they're not just learning it at our old age, but they're learning and have all of this knowledge at their young age? So I'm just going to quickly go back to the chat uh, before uh, we get to the top of the hour. And uh, Sister Afro Jabo uh, says, Blues up. Oh, that's, so that's commenting to someone. Uh, yes, uh, knowledge is power saying, same as Sub Sahara, very degrading. And I think that's going back to um, when they, we were talking about the how they've reduced the size of Africa. Yeah, it's all about uh, degrading uh, Africa as well. So, uh, what comments have we got? Blue Zodiac. Africa is not the actual name of the continent. The original name is Al Kabulan. So we'll uh, ask you to address Thank that you, in a short while. Thank you, Dr. Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Knowledge is power says we are also not black. You have very dark, melanated, beautiful people. Okay, and knowledge so is knowledge not is power either. Knowledge <laughs> is not power. It's the, the application, it's the application of it, isn't it? That's right. That knowledge is, gives you strength. Is. Wisdom is power. They mm -hmm. teach you to get knowledge, but then not apply it. Yes, yes. So it's the application of the knowledge that is the power. So if you take all of this knowledge that you're acquiring and put it into some constructive action, uh, then yeah, and it proposes to take action. That's powerful. That outcome of the action is powerful. Rain's Warning Sound says, uh, what's Jamaican in the geography? Is Jamaica also America? Mm, okay. Well, remember, remember that it was uh, 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 Columbus discovered uh, America, is what they say, 1492. He never set foot on the continent. Mm -hmm. But he, 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 he discovered Trinidad. I think he went to Jamaica, went to those, he went on the islands. Amerigo Vespucci is credited mm -hmm. with the name, but it's, it's a case of, yeah, of course, Jamaica is part of your actual fight. You're an African American, you're part of the Americas. Mm -hmm. so if, you, if you take it to, to that level, it's, mm -hmm. it's, there is no separation. And the original people certainly identified themselves as being part of the Americas, didn't they? The, uh, well, you took the Ar Arawaks, the Caribs, right. the, uh, it's, it's, it's like the Makusu Indians and in, uh, so indigenous people in Brazil. All mm -hmm. those different people have those uh, those identities of being Native American. But you say Native mm -hmm. American, like the brother was saying. They had similar Dr. culture, Dr. didn't they? Very oh, yeah, yeah. Culture. Mm -hmm. you, you, see, you see, it's like Dr. Ben. Uh, um, Dr. Ben was a mischief maker. Met him a good few times. Took him to dinner, uh, you know. So it, it was a mischief that we, we went, for instance, uh, talking for dinner at Melanin Conference back in, I'm name dropping now, you see, back in the 90s, early 90s. And uh, people said, what do you talk to Dr. Ben about? I said, women and boxing. <laughs> it, was a, it was a rascal. But then he, he coined the term al -Kibbalan. But then it's, okay, it's not the original name for Africa. And that Brother Jane Small, I was watching Brother Jane Small, Professor Small, is mm -hmm. that my godfather? I, 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 I watched him, he was talking about that. That is not the original name. It's named for a Roman general. However, that's the name that we've got with at the present time. I mean, there have been so many different names over the time, so I haven't there. At one the time, size of Ethiopia. The place. Yeah, at one time, it's called the size Ethiopia. Of the place. And Ethiopia actually stretched all the way into Europe. Another time, it was called uh, Kush. Uh, you know, there's been various names. Yeah, so, uh, But today, it's called Africa. Um, let me get a couple more questions in or, or comments. This one says, uh, is a blue zodiac. Uh, that's right. Uh, plus there are several other, con several other original names for the continent. So yeah, that's uh, precisely what I was uh, just saying. And not you know, the, say best one, the best I one was, <laughs> listen to this, the best name for Africa was ours. Oh, yes. <laughs> you remember there's a film called Out of Africa? Uh, no, that? I don't know. Robert no, no. is out of Africa. So there's uh -huh. another one called Get Out of Africa. Uh -huh. so there's, there's a, and there's another one with bad language, Get the Out of Africa. So it's, it's like that, that kind of dynamic. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sorry, sorry, sis. No, no, it's okay. Uh, Hazel, what's Hazel saying? Uh, wonder love of the world. What is uh, what is his thought about the uh, Antarctica? Why is it that no one is freely to travel there? A lot of that's Ooh. information been coming online recently, and they're, they're actually saying, uh, "Was it Adolf Hitler was meant to be down there with his Nazis, and that there's uh, uh, there's buildings built up beneath the ice, there's a whole underground system, etc. That there's pyramids down there, that there's all mm-hmm. kinds of stuff, mm-hmm. and." Um, once again, for me, I'll put it on the table, wait and see. Mm-hmm. I'll glean the information, put it on there, wait and see. Does it make any sense later? Because mm-hmm. there's, mm-hmm. there's, an American, there's an American explorer who said he flew over certain things and whatever, whatever. But then they also say that there's a, uh, there's a treaty that where people are not allowed to fly over there. They're not allowed to go to, to Antarctica. So it adds to its mm-hmm. mystery and mystique. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, there's all that 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 kind of information there. Mm. See, when I've got when I've got that that kind of basic introductory knowledge to it, it means I can go to it deeper and go and find out more about it. Mm. So I know it's there, but I don't have to immerse in it and be thinking, "Oh my God, they've got that thing going on." I go like, "No, no, let's have a look about the day to day, what's going on around us." Mm-hmm. You know, as I so instead of I'm going to work in the prison with my brothers in the prison, trying to create a better day for us. You know, and do and do the other work that I'm doing, but I need to know this other information as well, and all different kinds of information. I remember mm-hmm. one day I was at the Louvre Museum in uh, Paris, mm-hmm. and I I came out and I looked and I could name one of the historical figures that were in carvings. They're all French, mm-hmm. but I, it was at that day I realized I knew absolutely nothing, because each of these countries, each of these cultures. Mm-hmm. Each of these three, they, they all have their own history, mm-hmm. have their own philosophy, etc. And I tell you, I tell you another thing. Paul Robeson, who I disrespected one time, I always, I, it's a thing. I'm, I'm looking at his picture here and by my shrine. Paul mm-hmm. Robeson spoke 27 African wow. dialects. Wow, wow, wow! You understand me, polymath, yeah. genius guy, genius guy. Wow. But then you, you're looking, you're looking at what they did to him. MK, MK ultra him. You understand me? So. Yeah. What, I, what I'm what I'm I'm saying to you is that yeah, there's so much knowledge and information. Mm-hmm. And people say to me sometimes, "Oh, you know so much, brother." But I said the only thing I'm certain of is that I know little. But I'm open to find out. I'm open to to know and find out more. But get to the point of optimum knowledge. Okay, optimum knowledge. What are you doing with all that knowledge? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How are you living your life? How is it improving your relationships? Is it improving mm-hmm. your your ability to get to get uh, wealth, generate wealth, mm-hmm. or take political action? What's that knowledge doing? Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll finish with this, these things: 1884, 1885, landmark year. 1884, all kind of thing going on there in the mm-hmm. European world. Mm-hmm. And it's a day that they invented time. They divided the spoils of Africa and they gained carte blanche to do what they wanted in the world. Statue of Liberty, Greenwich Meridian and the Berlin Conference all took place in that year. Mm-hmm. They also laid the foundation for the Statue of Liberty as well. The Scottish Rite Lodge in New York laid the foundation on Ellis Island for the Statue of Liberty. So it's like, oh yeah, and Washington Monument, the obelisk, the Takanu, to celebrate George Washington with a bedette at the entrance, that that was uh, opened in 1884 as well. Mm-hmm. So for some year, you got that 1492 is another year, which on the timelines highlighted, and then 1884. That John deGrasse Tyson, when he was asked about the most important year, he says 1492, mm-hmm. and Why? three small ships from Palos in Spain, Palos de la Frontera, they call it, because Pala de la, when they say de la Frontera, is de la Frontera is the old frontier with the Moors. So right across southern Spain, it's all de la Frontera, de la Frontera, de la Frontera. So Palas, de la Frontera, three ships sailed to the Americas and opened up the European world to that power base. Yeah? Biggest case of illegal immigration took place in history. It's another story. So what goes on? 1492, 1884. Please check them out. Colonial map of Africa. So the powers, what did they do? The Berlin Conference. 
This, by the way, is by 19, uh, sorry, 1913, before the Germans were kind of dealt with. So these are the things. So France, Britain, Portugal, Germany, Belgium, Spain, Italy, and then only Ethiopia was independent. So they divided Africa like that. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Spain as well in the orange. Spain, so Spain. Yeah, Spain's up there in the top, the orange as well. So you see, it's, it, I've got that mixed up. Oh, yeah, it should be orange. It didn't transfer well. The, the Spain is the orange. Now, what I'm putting to you, they divided. There's not one natural uh, uh, African directed line on that map. Imagine. So when you start talking about, oh, Africans, this Africa, it's like when you go and do your, your, uh, your DNA test, like the general DNA, when you go and find that out, they'll give you, they say you're Nigerian or you're from Cameroon or you're from, whatever. no, those are boundaries set up by the European powers. Mm -hmm. So for instance, my, my African, my African uh, blood goes from Eastern Nigeria through Cameroon to Equatorial Guinea, down into Gabon and across into Cameroon because all that area one time is Igbo, I-G-B-O, mm -hmm. yes? So my mm -hmm. father, that bloodline from right round the corner, skidding round the corner, what used to be called the Bight of Biafra, now they call the Bight of Benin. So what happens is those boundaries get there. Go to AfricanAncestry.com uh, and you do the, it's more expensive, but they've got a bigger database. That's where I've got that information from. Whereas the uh, Ancestry.com gave me Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So this, these are the powers, the, the divisions that are there. Every time we call these names, I, I always remember back in the day, the guy called David Nabarro is a, is a white guy, a, a virologist, the virology one of the leading experts in AIDS in the AIDS epidemic when it started. This is back in about 1987. Me and my father were asked to talk to a group of doctors from all around Africa. And I was like, me and my father were going like, oh, we're a couple of hood rats. A couple of hood rats going to talk to these doctors and professors from the School of Tropical Medicine in Liverpool. We're like, oh my God. So we both, because Lance is a high ranking martial artist and bo professional boxer. I was a boxer and martial artist, lower ranking. And we got ready for it, like we're going for a fight. And we were there, we're ringing up. I remember ringing up Brother Saba Sakana, ringing up, checking with people, doing this, doing that, cross-referencing, getting ready for this thing. Two weeks notice we had for it. We got ready and we're there, fit, mm. ready for fight, ready for this thing. And then this, uh, this guy said to me, a doctor from, from Nigeria, Yoruba guy, he said, ah, Paul, I see that you're, 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 uh, 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 you have a, a, a Nigerian name now. I said, Igbo. He said, no, don't you mean Nigerian? I said, no, Igbo. And he said, uh, he said, why, why are you being like this is divisive? And I said, well, Nigeria was invented by the London Times newspaper. A woman called Flora Shaw won the competition of the London Times newspaper to name the British West African protectorate. And she suggested Nigeria, meaning the River Niger area. And she won the competition and the workers. Yeah. She later married Frederick Lugard, the first commissioner of Nigeria. Yeah. And I was, and this guy said, oh, Nigeria. But I thought Mongo Park discovered the River Niger. This highly educated doctor thought mm. a Scotsman discovered the frigging river that would have been mm. by for how many thousand years? Mm -mm. But that's where the mentality. I love mm -hmm. Claudia Zavlaski, who did a book called Africa Counts. I'm on and in it. She was talking about new num number system. This is a white German woman going to Africa to study new, new numeracy systems. Mm. And then she was talking to these Yoruba <laughs> mathematicians in London. And they said, we're Yoruba. We know not of any such thing like that. She said, yeah, you're Yoruba, but your brains were made in Britain. Mm. So think about that. Okay. How much, what language do you dream in? Mm -hmm. What language do you dream in? What, what facts do you know more than, the, the, more than any other fact that they've been nurtured all the time? So mm -hmm. all I will say here, the Greenwich, this is what I finish with. The Greenwich Prime Meridian Zero was done in Washington, D.C. in October 1884. This is, this, is, this is what they call now, that park, they call Malcolm X Park. If you get the chance to go to D.C., get to Tony Browder, Atlantis Browder, and they do a field, field trip of Washington, D.C., and they call, his book is called Egypt on the Potomac. All the things you see in there, I, I can tell you, down at the bottom of these steps, the, the, it's a waterfall, mm -hmm. and what you have at the bottom, a papyrus, and lotus blossoms, oh. like in northern and southern Kemet. Oh. And you look at all these things. They've got, oh my gosh! Oh, but they've, oh. 
and they made Greenwich Prime Meridian Zero, the Statue of Liberty gifted by France. Mm -hmm. so they mm -hmm. toured it around the country, around the USA in its parts, then assembled it on Ellis Island, mm -hmm. which, which was actually an island made up from what from the uh, on the, the subway in New York, and they piled all the stuff in there and made the island, and then put the Statue of Liberty on it. Greenwich Meridian. Finish with this. Here we go. Why is why is Jamaica why is Jamaica five hours behind UK? Hmm. Do you know why? Uh, I can have a guess, but no, because uh, of time. <laughs> why don't you just tell us? <laughs> it's, it's fifteen degrees, three hundred and sixty degrees divided by by twenty four hours is fifteen degrees. 15 degrees equals one hour. Uh -huh. And so you've got the actual real time. They drew this imaginary line down the map of the world mm -hmm. where you can go to Greenwich and stand either side of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Can you imagine the power to define time around mm -hmm. the world? Mm -hmm. I say what time it is and people live by the clock. Mm -hmm. That's why I always say to people, take the sea off clock, it says lock. We've been <laughs> locked down in time mm -hmm. and space. Mm -hmm. by a certain culture mm -hmm. and to mm -hmm. keep that going this is why we need to understand the eastern and western mindset mm. western and they stopped western. time didn't they and restarted it again uh, ADBC uh, that, that's correct but then yeah. here's the oriental what's the other what's, what, what are we in in the west mm. what are we in what's the opposite of oriental mm. what is it it's occidental <laughs> we're in the mm. occident we don't know it because we're in it. And these are basics that when we're trying to on the whoa, wait a minute. So why are they not telling us these things? They tell you what's different, not what's the same. Mm -hmm. They want you to, to keep off balance. So Greenwich Meridian still does a ritual of dropping that ball every day at one o'clock. Mm -hmm. That the sailors in the do you know that the guy from the Meridian used to sell time to local shopkeepers with his daughters? They'd ride a bike with a clock in it, and then they'd set their, their clocks. <laughs> it's, a, it's an actual invention. Let me, let me finish with this. In the UK, real time. Across the UK, there's a considerable difference in real time from coast to coast. That's in the U UK. We, there's the central. We are prime meridian zero. Greenwich meridian Z GMT. We're zero. You go to the east, you're going forward in time. You go to the west, you're going backwards in time. So what happens is, as the Earth rotates, the actual time within a one-hour time zone is also different in real time. So there's, there's the UK. The rotation's going that way. And what do we have? There's London at 9 o'clock, imagine, using 9 o'clock. Well, what time, what time is it? The meridian's there. What time is it across the country? So what mm -hmm. goes on Norwich? It's 9.05 already. It's five minutes ahead. Mm -hmm. Norwich is plus five. York is minus four. It's 8.56. Here we have Coventry. It's 8.54. It's six minutes behind. What happened is Blackburn, where I was raised, is 8.50. It's 10 minutes behind. Not some people will say it's like centuries. Behind. Well, that's another. <laughs> then you have, you have, you have a Newport in Wales, 12 minutes behind. You have Torquay. Is in a four is 14 minutes behind, and then you got mm -hmm. Ben Nevis in Scotland, he's 20 minutes behind. Mm -hmm. So, that's so in I real mean, time. yeah, so what all of this shows is that you know we've all been conditioned into um interpreting time in a particular way, but you know it's a nonsense really when you look at it in terms of the geography and uh and nature, yeah. And nature. yeah. You know, we used to tell the time, didn't we, from from the um, uh, from the cosmos, from the stars. You know, um, the seasons, you, the times. Go to a village in Nigeria. I, I mm -hmm. went out one morning, and it was late morning. I went on this walk, and I didn't say good morning to somebody. Right, I didn't say good morning mm -hmm. to her. I was like, walk. I was like, I think I was jogging or something. I didn't, I didn't say good morning. By the time I got round, it was the afternoon. Right, mm -hmm. I got told off when I got back to the compound. Mm, they already heard good about good morning, it then all of a sudden good afternoon good evening good night time of the day natural yeah something Not else has just come to mind as well 
And we've all got an internal body clock as well, because uh, most of the time, you know, we can probably just know the time <laughs> before looking at the time. You know, I mean, you know, how often, how often does that happen to you all, everybody? Right, right <laughs> in, I think it's the ceridian cycle or something to call it. But then what mm -hmm. happens is if you go to uh, uh, Greenwich Museum, the, the Greenwich Meridian Museum, Mm -hmm. shows you that the ancient Indians, for instance, mm -hmm. knew the time of day and the vibrations in each of your major organs. There you go. Wow, wow, remember, wow. Even remember this as your... well. What I ask you to do is look up the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve. And, the vagus uh, nerve. Uh -huh. Yeah, the vagus, V-A-G-U-S, vagus nerve in the body is that which connects the brain to the heart, to the abdominal brain, which we call the solar plexus and the abdominal brain. In actual fact, they call it the information superhighway in the body. And when you look at that, to me, I, I say, I've been saying, that corresponds with my art. It corresponds wow. with the function of my art and the symbolism of the, of the ostrich. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. And you know what comes to mind as well as you're talking about that? Uh, the connection between the brain and the body it just tells me then this is how we ought to be able to control our healing. If we were to develop that, connection on a conscious level then the brain could talk to the organs in our body and say you're healed and tell it you know what it is you want it to do wow yeah, and NHS that... will say, talk to the hand <laughs> they would indeed but we're dealing with nature we're dealing with a higher level of power a higher level of of uh, you know spirituality probably that we've got and we don't even realize it. And it just takes something to trigger it and then for us to practice it. And then our ancestors will kick in. Those ancestors that go back generations to upon generations inside of each of us, who maybe used to practice that before the NHS came into being. Wow, wow, wow. Well, as always, my brother, it has been such an insightful and interesting presentation. And I know you probably didn't even get halfway through your slides, but roughly wow. Half. Huh? Sorry? Uh, roughly half. Roughly half. There we yeah, go. Yeah. So there's still so, so much more. I just, uh, I just want to say, sis, is, please, hmm. I'm asking people to take care of the basics. <laughs> and just to remember that there's basic information. I want, because what happens is yeah. there are people who give you all kinds of information on mm. top of what you don't know. Yeah. And then there are certain things we have to... It's like if you, I have this thing here, I always keep it here, it's called the 10 virtues. Mm -hmm. The 10 mm -hmm. virtues, and it's will be the 10 virtues of my art. And then the last one, it says, I will cultivate the ability to distinguish between the real and the unreal. Mm -hmm. That means mm -hmm. in the Nile Valley, there must have been fake news going on. Right. About Donald right. Trump. So there's always a need to question, <laughs> always a need to distinguish. Oh, every time. And I uh, just want to thank you so, so much uh, for sharing all of your knowledge with you. There was a question in chat. If you could stop sharing, please, uh, screen, uh, that would be great. Then we can see you um, uh, back on screen. There was a question in the chat. How can they get hold of your timeline? I, at the moment, what I'm doing, like I've said, I'm redrafting. And uh, yeah. I, I've done... I, I think it's an improvement, but I'm an artist. So what happens is I, I've made it more spaced. What what happened was I was when I was in uh when I was over in Egypt recently, I was on uh Anthony Browder's trip mm -hmm. and it was uh Atlantis Browder said that she preferred the old version, the old old version, because it was more spaced. There's more mm -hmm. space, there's not much information on it. Mm -hmm. So I, I took Atlantis's uh kind of critique yeah eight to four <laughs> she's giving you a huge okay. amount of work <laughs> so to everyone in the audience uh, can i please remind you uh one that um we don't have a live show uh next strong next wednesday we don't have a live show uh but you know definitely we'll be back the following wednesday so please do put that in your diary and uh, on the way out, please give us a thumbs up. Also, do put some comments uh, uh, in the description under the video as well. Uh, talk about the maps. You know, let people know if they want to see the real maps and get an indication of the 
the scale of the world, the size of it, etc. Then uh, this is a video uh, to check out if they want more information about the left brain, right brain, you know, and uh, the importance of the balance of it, etc. This is the video to watch and everything else that you picked up, you know, from today's learning. Just share a little bit of it in the description uh, under the video. Let me allow our brother Paul to leave us with some final words of inspiration and encouragement. Well, hopefully we start to look at the timeline as a visual aid to context, but also think about mind maps. Mm. So when you're mapping yes. the mind, yeah, just on that. And, I, you know, I just pray that you're getting that consciousness going on, that we're firing, you know, we're firing. Yeah. We're not supposed to lose the power of the mind. We're not supposed to lose it. Mm -hmm. physically, physically, maybe. Mentally, spiritually, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we're not supposed to lose it. So here we are uh, on the Sister Shanice show, sharing knowledge because knowledge is power if you apply it. Also, Ouch. you know, we are here to change the mindset because once you are able to take back control of your mind and your thinking, then you're able to apply your new thinking into action. And if we are all, you know, um, in control of our actions and working towards the upliftment and the furtherance and the betterment of us as a people, then when we get that critical mass movement of all of us moving forward collectively together on a higher level, it's a revolution. It is a change that's taking place. So uh, one show at a time, one show at a time, family. We are uh, taking back up control of our minds so that we can uh, take back control of our actions. So I want to rise up, rise up the entire family. I want to thank you all so, so much for tuning in. To everyone in the audience who's been commenting, thank you so, so much. To our special guest this evening, Brother Paul Labina. He hasn't finished his presentation, so let's see if we can get him back again in the very near oh, future. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Thank you so, so much, Brother Paul. Much appreciate love, all of the knowledge that you've been sharing with us, and we look forward to your new um, scroll that's coming out, the new timeline. Uh, brilliant, brilliant. So more love, more power, more strength to each and every one of you. Sister Shanice out of here for now. Thank you. Bye.